flipping heck. It is another episode of Bob. If you like this kind of stuff, if you don't and you can't turn it off, if you want to contact me, Church House Classics, it's all one word, at gmail.com. If you fancy supporting the channel or playing Buy Me a Pint, then there's a PayPal Me link scrolling down here. It's also in the description below the video. But anyway, enjoy. Oh yeah, don't forget to thumbs up or subscribe. It helps the algorithms. Did I say that already? I might have done. Enjoy. <sighs> Think you might get the boat. Maybe it's that different out there. Put those out there. <laughs> I'll test it. I'll take it. Uh, uh, much in not seen. Huge issue. We need something, yeah. Right, that was looking quite clean. So, yeah. It's, it's alright. Certainly better than a boat anchor. Uh, we were not impressed with boat anchor, were we, Richard? Fucking well. That's a rubbish pile over there, I keep chucking things out. Right, so what the fuck have I been doing? Well, I've taken all the wires off the electrics down there. I'm going to take off the exhaust manifolds because they're later types. And this is why I don't really want to be pushing a distributor down inside here because it's going to push all that shit down in towards the sump. Now, I know it's got an oil filter on it and stuff like that, but I'll see what I can do. Anyway. Okay, plugs are all out. Got the water pump off, which was not the end of the world because they're quite cheap, but a good overall indication of how well this thing's been looked after um, prior to a gibbon cutting off the front end of it. I mean, that's scrap now. Got a good power steering pump off it. That's my flywheel I'm going to put onto it. And now we're just going to get ready. My, um, <laughs> fortunately, my big box of diagnostic kit is one of the very few things that didn't actually make it into the container. So we're going to work on a um, uh, oil pressure valve. We're just going to hope it works. I've hooked it up to this light down here. So if the light goes off, we know that we're, we're, we're getting some oil pressure. Um, so all I've done really, hooked up the positive wire from the back of the starter solenoid to a battery positive. Jump me, go for negative. That'll go to the top of the engine. Oh, look, there's the light on. And then I've got a little jump lead here going to the starter solenoid, which I shall put on here and it should crank over. Right, 
There's no guarantees, of course, that this um, system has not or doesn't need priming. What I might do is just take the plug off the top here and pump some oil in to make sure that the, the filter has got some oil in it. Um, let's just try another time. I mean, I'm seeing oil on the on the lifters, so the oil's going around. There is oil circulating. Right, I'm taking the oil pressure sensor out. It's as dry as a tip. So let's just see if we can actually, rather than taking the pump out, let's just see if we can pump a load of oil down there. And it might actually prime the system through. Slowly. Ah. No plugs in, of course. Let's put that back in again. See, now we are getting some oil pressure. Otherwise, I'm going to fuck around and get the oil pump off pack it out. Um, I can take the distributor out I suppose. Um, I don't know if I've got my oil prime tool here. Most of my stuff is here. Oh, it goes back on there. It goes back on there. Uh, we've got the negative goes back on the battery. There we go. So we've got a circuit. Right, now let's try. <sighs> I think it's not priming its way down. No, one of these. Oh, there's lots of oil there now. There is lots of oil, so that's primed it. That's dirty oil as well, so it has primed. Right, might just be filling the oil filter up. I don't know. We'll see. It has primed there, which is good news. So back to. Go back. A bit. I know you're going to get the noise from the, uh, the start and charge. I'm afraid. Sorry about this, folks. Oil pressure. So we've got oil pressure. Yeah, get that. Turns out quite nicely. Right, let's do a compression check on it now. Uh, so, uh, as you see, I've got no spark plugs in there at all. It's just a case of going round each of the system with the pressure tester, recording our pressure, and uh, then, to be honest, knowing we've got oil pressure, I'm inclined to actually prepare this thing to go straight in. Right, let's work down the one, three, five, seven, Two, four, six, eight. Don't need to hold the front loading because, oh, by the way, I have got the valve gear attached. <laughs> Do you want to go up here and watch this? It might be a bit better for you. I don't know. Can you see up there? Can you see? Sort of. There you go. You can see. Let's just lower this back a little bit to save you collapsing in a bloody great big heap because of gravities. We're standing on front of Haggis at the moment, but Haggis has got a nice tarp. Right, 
So I want anything over 150 really, 140 to 150 across the board, and I would be one happy chap. Right, let's give it a go. test and for some inexplicable reason none of it videoed not one little bit i don't know anyway so i'm just gonna have to talk you through what i did um so basically the compressions testing from one three five seven two four six eight um came out as 120 100 150 125 155 60 125 130 and i was a bit disappointed if i'm honest <coughs> Having a little think about this, I just started to think, well, it's not, com the piston rings are not stuck on this thing. It's got no signs of any form of abuse that might cause piston rings to stick. It's not consistent that the one ball would be down and the other balls would be, unless it was a head gasket issue. So then <clears throat> I thought, well, okay, maybe, just maybe there's a, a dusting of rust on each of the balls. And those pistons that were right at the very top are reading very well, and those that were right at the very bottom for now um, were reading a little bit more poorly because they had a little bit more dusting of rust to get rid of. So I sprayed a load of WD-40 into each of the plug holes and cranked it over for a good few minutes. Got the got the starter motor nice and warm. I gave it a rest every now and then. Oil pressure light, as you've seen, went out instantly on cranking, which I'm very impressed with down here. I don't know what the pressure is because I haven't got the adapter to go onto that. Um, so all of these figures improved, except for those that were 150, 155. These two didn't go up any higher, because those are pretty much that's as I would expect it. Um, they were all improving. Uh, basically, the general consensus was, from folk I spoke to, was just give it a run. It didn't need Red X. Just give it a run. Everything will loosen up. Quality oil, um, and you'll find all the compressions will come up in use. So I'm going to gamble on this a little bit. However, I did a wet test, so a good old squirt of oil into each of the cylinders, and they came up. So from 120 to 150, and these are the very, very, very first readings. So these, these readings improved with the WD-40 treatment. So 120 to 150, 100 to 150, 150 to 160, 125 to 160, 155 to 160, 60 to 155, 125 to 155, and 130 to 150. Now, I don't think that there are bore or piston ring problems on this. Um, there was no sign that the piston rings were stuck. There's no sounds that the piston rings are broken. So I'm going to gamble on it. Um, at the moment, as you can see, the engine is just on the chassis here. I'll mount a radiator up to it. I'm rebuilding the calves at the moment. 
<clears throat> I'll stick the carbs on it and I'll run it up because I want to test the transmission anyway. Um, sorry, folks, for those who are rather hoping I was going to run it up on the floor. I'll do it to the next one, promise. Um, it's fun running up V8s on the floor because you just don't want to rev them too hard because uh, they tip over <laughs> while you're pouring petrol into the top of them. Um, <laughs> it's very, very, very silly. Um, I mean, the only thing I'm really going to need on this, I'll just need a short belt to go around and feed the water pump. I don't need alternator. I can run it on a, a, a complete discharge. Um, but I'm fairly confident with this thing. I'm going to give it a bit of a steam clean uh, just to clean all the crud off the outside of it. But other than that, that was really all I identified. So uh, as you saw, the oil pressure light goes out pretty damn quick once I primed the pump. And all I did to prime the pump was take this out, squirt oil into the top of the pump housing. Obviously, there's no filter on it at the moment. <clears throat> I've drained all the oil out. I've drained, taken the filter off. I'm going to take the sump off because I want to change the gasket on it. Uh, but that was it. So, okay, it's a wet test. Um, but all the figures are around where I would expect them to be for a relatively healthy engine. And all of this stuff was done before I changed the camshaft and the hydraulic followers. That's it, really. Well, I rebuilt a pair of prop shafts there. These prop shafts came from the VM engine car that the gearbox came from um, because I didn't know if the earlier uh, shafts were fit or not. Been a bit of a bother this one. Um, so all four, pissing up the rain again, all four joints were knackered. Uh, one of them I actually had to cut out. Um, so this is what happens when you start breaking the circlips. Uh, and this thing, there's no way was this thing going to come out. So really with kind of the, the yoke off at an angle, you can just cut through uh, the ends of it. Just cut each of the ends of the spider. You can see this thing. This, this has been properly abused. This is very rusty, this one. And even when I started to bash the uh, the cups out, so you can see a couple of them really didn't want to sort of let go of the yoke. Uh, so that was that one. Um, that one was a GKN original. Uh, it had life left in it, but not a lot. You can see a lot of them here, they were just bone dry. Uh, one of these, I think it might have been this one actually, didn't even have, it was a Hokie Koki 5000, didn't even have a bleed nipple fitting on it. So I don't know how you're supposed to get the... Uh, the fluid in there there's nothing nothing at all and that was particularly gruesome um but anyway they're built now just took me hours now current challenge i've got is around the long stick conversion of the short stick gearbox uh gearbox came from a dis sorry gearbox came from a range rover but obviously it's got the range rover adapter on the top here which will come up here this far from the front of the dash and the customer really wants to kind of have the long stick look to it so but I've got a nice long stick adapter as you know but as you know the Defender long stick has a different mechanism on the underside so I bought a kit from Ashcross I'll show you that in a second and all I need to do is undo that little five mil hex grub screw in there is it shifting is it fuck um, so we're going to forget medieval with that on the driller in a second. The other thing I need to do with this gearbox, I've got the mounts in from Tim. So Mr. Hammond provided me with a set of mounts. That bit there and this bit here are the bits that come off a Borg Warner gearbox. Um, and uh, they're, they're going to fit basically. The challenge I've got now is that the passenger side uses the original style let's go around over there uses the original style mounting like that and if we line all this lot up down here next to it we can see that that's going to fit so as far as the passenger side is concerned i've now got the mounting sorted on the driver's side however he didn't have the chassis rail uh, mounting for the driver's side which is this fucking great big affair here but we've got the small mounting that bolts onto the gearbox so I'm rather hoping that when all this comes apart um, I'll be able to drill a hole through this mounting here and put the cotton reel through it I think it'll work yes I think it'll work interestingly this gearbox does not have a serial number stamped on it 
Um, it's quite a late LT77. It's not a 380 because the reverse is up beside first. Um, it's got the Borg Warner transfer box in it, but no number stamped where I'd normally expect to see it, right there. It's not there. Nothing. Never mind. Um, the other thing I need to do, someone's been a bit cack handed, Tim, getting the uh, <laughs> prop shaft off. Um, and the studs are bent on the back here, so I just need to undo the hub nut on the back here. Um, and then I can, <clears throat> once the hub's off, I can take the, the drum off, just check the handbrake out while I'm at it, get those uh, bolts out, put new bolts in, and we're away. Now, the kit I've bought from Mr. Transmissions, Ash Ashcroft Transmissions, is this little adapter here. It's quite neat, actually. Nicely made. So that peg there goes into the selector rail. That goes onto the end of the selector rod and fits onto this. And all it's effectively doing, this hopefully will have cooled down a little bit now. Yes. Um, if I push that to one side, you can see there's a gate built into the gearbox here. And on the underside of this adapter, there's a little rod that allows you to select out that it's still warm, various gears. And it moves the selector rod back and forth. Okay. The only other bit that is in there, on the underside of here, there's a little fork there, and on the underside of this one, similarly, is a little fork. And all that does is holds this sleeve here, because that's for reverse gear. Okay. The, the key thing here is really, when, when I take this thing out, I want it to be in neutral. And that's in neutral. It does that. Right, what I'm gonna to have to do with this, I think, is put lots of paper, sticky stuff underneath here, tons and tons and tons of it. And we're gonna to have to get Mr. Drilly in there, I'm afraid. I'm not drilling down as far as the shaft, I'm just gonna drill, because I've got this much, there's probably about a centimeter of meat in there. If I'm looking at the shaft that Ashcross has sent me in the little grub screw, it looks like there's about five mil of thread to drill through. Ah, before I get there, I might just give it a tap with a chisel. The problem is though, still gonna need paper under there because I really, I mean, just now, what was I doing? Where is, just now, I was using a, a T drive, <coughs> a Torx drive, and I got it hammered in there and I was turning it around and it was starting to turn. Luckily, it's magnetic. As you can see, it's just picking up bits of uh, unhardened steel. So the grub screw is non-hardened, which is great. That's outstanding. Thank you so much, whoever built these fucking things. Anyway, it'll come out. It's got to come out. <laughs> There's no choice in the matter. It's coming out. Um, and then get the mount sorted out. I might roll it up the road to the steam clean, actually, with the engine in there. Just get it to steam clean mechanicals the body's going to come off fairly soon anyway so i can paint the underside of it it is a lot of fun <laughs> um yeah engine i've ordered up a camshaft followers gaskets it's going back together again timing chain and gears and i'm just going to put it back together again i'm not going to go any further with it i think that that engine it's going to be okay. Uh, I think that there was just a film of rust on the insides of the balls from where it had been sat for a long time, which is why the compressions were low. Ah, oh dear. And I think that the when everything was wet and it had been cranked over a few times um, and I poured oil in there, then I think that that really did get things working. I, I need to set this thing up, by the way. I took this thing right apart um, because it was a bit gummed up. Um, when I took the transfer lever off the top there, because I don't need that, um, the transfer lever, I'm going to use the Borg Warner lever and have it coming up over here somewhere. But when I took this plate off, the inside of this was just full of watery grease. So then I took this plate off and it wasn't any better. So I stripped the whole bloody thing down. The little plunger that's in here uh, for the reverse gear, uh, that was completely bunged up as well. So I've had to strip the whole bloody thing down. I'll have to adjust it all back up. I put the same number of shims under there that were there before. So I'm rather just hoping that all I need to adjust is that to make sure I get the four, five speeds and reverse. 
Um, the other thing I had aggravation with was these selectors here. So the selector itself is fine, but the lever was bone dry. You can see. Not uncommon, I'll be honest. Not uncommon. Uh, there's the redundant lever. This is the Borg Warner part of the lever. Um, so that just really wants mounting up um, and coming through the floor. Might even end up, I don't know yet, I don't know if it's going to be an LT95 or an LT77 cover that's going to go back on this thing. But it'll be one of them. Because once that's in place, I'll, I'll get a rough idea. Right, enough gabbing on. Let's get on with this fucking thing. <sighs> well, it's off. There it is. That's the bit I was trying to get off. I mean, I've drilled it probably just inside the thread, actually. But it wasn't going to come off. It really wasn't. It's properly kind of... I don't know if it had been arrowed in or what. But anyway, it's off. Which is good news. I'll find out what thread that is. Um, now, <clears throat> how did I do it? Well, I didn't video it, first of all, because I didn't jinx it. But basically, a piece of paper went right way round underneath the selector shaft and back out the other side, then wedged loads of stuff in there. Um, and then it was a case of running in a vacuum cleaner while I was drilling it. <laughs> and that's the little bit. That's the bottom of it. I didn't go right the way through the bottom of the peg. So that's right at the very bottom. Bastard fucking piece of fucking bastard. Bastard, fucking bastard, bastard. There you go. That bit there is that end there. Now, I'm going to put all this back together now. So I think this is going to be relatively straightforward. But again, I can't be asked to video it because I haven't got my tripod out with me. Um, and I need to get a gasket for it as well. I haven't got a gasket. That's a bit short-sighted, wasn't it? LT77 selector gasket. <sighs> right, we'll check it works first of all. It's not really a problem. Um, right, thank you, Mr. Vacuum Cleaner, again. Um, sorry, Mr. Heat, you didn't work this, on this occasion. I don't know why you didn't work. I mean, honestly, that is... I mean, that is still some way off there, so the thread is actually still in there. Just about see it. You can see where I melted the nylon, trying to get the fucking thing out. This is the bush, by the way. And that's the little selector peg on the bottom there. Right. Five o'clock. Pushed forwards into a position of failure. Uh, it's not a huge fail, but basically, um, it works in neutral. And you can select a gear, but it's a bastard. And the main reason for that is that... Have we got it loose? We have got it loose. Just get him off. Just gonna pull it off. Off we come. There we go. We're off. Right, let's get this um, fork sorted out. So, crux of the problem is let's get the two adapters the right way up. Like that. Bring you over here. So basically, this is where the fork sits. This fork's job, fork in hell, is to hold the reverse gear selector steady while the other selectors are moving backwards and forwards because it sits on the selector rail. But the problem is, as you're moving the selector rail, reverse gear selectors wobbling up and down. So it kind of it stops you selecting two gears at the same time. It's essential to this thing running. Um, very, 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 very simple device. All it is, fork on a piece of hardened steel with a base plate welded onto it. The problem I've got is, that's the selector, the underside of the selector that came off the gearbox. That's the selector, the long stick selector that's come off a defender that I bought. Ignore the selector mechanism, because that now has been resolved with the really nice kit from Ashcroft transmission, which bolted on like that. Super easy, apart from getting the old one off. Um, and if you look at the mounting hole here and here, and then you look at the relationship of that selector, where that selector sits there, like that, and where this one sits here. 
and you can see it's a fair amount further back which means that the reverse gear selector is actually here somewhere and it's not holding it steady so this needs to be here there's my phone I'm struggling with telephones um, right okay so I'm gonna make up a little plate here which I'm gonna bolt onto this it's the same thickness as this so more or less just drill two holes like that and then this wants to mount as far forwards on here as it needs to that's a chunk of steel that I cut off yesterday I'll see if I can work it out uh, exactly where it needs to go to but it's not gonna be pretty if it's hidden underneath the cover of the gearbox so I think we'll be okay um, and all I'm really doing is effectively mirroring that mount point and putting that existing kind of thing on it makes sense so on that basis, if I go from the bottom uh, Bernard, of the mounting hole here, just doing a visual, and I put a line along here that I would expect to be the centre point of this. So now what I really need to do here is to work out what the center point of that is. So we're gonna to need to go back to my template here. Doesn't help, but I haven't got a straight edge on this thing. Oh, what's the challenge if it was all straight edges, eh? Where would the challenge be? Where would the fun be of having straight edges? So what we'll do is we'll put that on there like that. We'll align it onto the adapter because then I've got kind of like the I can circle that and I can draw an approximate center line, visual center line. So I think giving him that you know there's there's a fair amount of movement on this where i've drawn that cross there is where i need to drill my next hole with me right you can go on there that needs to be a much bigger hole this time to find out what the diameter of the peg is. Peggy. In fact, we don't even need to take that off there, do we? That can stay there. Let's get Peggy. <laughs> Fuck it. Okay. Right. That's hole there. Thirteen. Might be a step drill. Let's do this. We drill to fourteen and then weld it in. I don't think I've got a thirteen drill bit here. I might have in the other box. Big old drill that. Um Right, a short while later, that's still warm, <laughs> keep me away from that. Um, right, I didn't weld it while it was on the housing, I've just bolted it up to the housing and done a trial fit. So I'm one step ahead of you folks. 
just putting this in here just to tidy it away. I can go in there in the box. OT95. Sorry, OT77 selector. Crap, crap, crap. Brushy, brushy, brush. Right, here we go. I dropped it as I was welding it. <laughs> it went a bit wide there, but it does the job. It's effective. Um, so that has now bolted on there. Let's go and show you what it looks like when I've got it in the car. I'm going to go and slap it in and check it works. But basically, the way that the selector works is you've got third gear, fourth gear, third gear, fourth gear. You can see the way it slides back and forth. And if you want first gear, that is over here and then up. And then it's down over here then down so the, the thing basically moves back and forth but by moving the selector one way or the other you can see it actually pivots the yoke a bit cack handy way of showing it richard but that's that right let me go into lob this in okay it's all bolted up because of these big old springs on the side here, it's difficult with the short stubby lever to be able to select. But first is more or less up there, like that. So that's not going into first. Ah, that's third. That's fourth. Ah, right over there. And up is fifth. So that's fifth gear selected. Back out. I mean, <laughs> imagine the fun it is to change a gear. But that gear stick, just that is it. So, but third and fourth going into beautifully now, whereas they weren't before. Okay, and then over there and up is first. Is that going to second? I think that has gone to second. If I push it up, it should centralize. Might be third. That's second. And then right over there, properly right over there. Is reverse, but I'm going to need the full stick on there in order to select reverse. Um, I'm, there's a spline on here, so I'm not going to start fucking around with it. Uh, there's some adjustment on the tension of the springs here, two nuts, and then there's a, a backstop which stops it going over too far. I guess four, fifth, there's fifth. Let's wind it back in here, wind the, the, the adjuster on this side back in because that was easy going into fifth that time. Does it come out? Yes, it does. Fifth. Third. Fourth. And fifth. And still not getting into first. I wonder if it's something to do with this. Take it right out. Maybe it's just the tension on these springs. I'll get the, the gear stick on it and then I can uh, I can test that a bit further. Mm -hmm.